boys and girls. I'm the reading teacher. I'm here on a quick trip to North Carolina and at the house we're staying in, there's this beautiful oak tree in the front yard. The arborist said it's over 300 years old. So I'm imagining soldiers from the Civil War even sitting underneath this tree. Isn't that cool? Well, it's a beautiful day and I've been staring at this tree and it's making me think of other things that are tall. And, and I remembered I've got this great book that I wanted to share with you. It's a true story of a girl named Ella Kate who turned out to be over eight feet tall at the age of 21 when she finally stopped growing. So let's listen to this awesome story. But first, I'm going to show you how big this tree really is. Kate, the true story of a real giant. And this story is written by Kate Kleiss and her sister M. Sarah Kleiss is the illustrator. So let's find out the true story of a real giant. Here we go. These are some really neat end papers, boys and girls. They tell some interesting facts. So the average female height today, that means what most women are is five feet, four inches, and you're gonna find out how tall Ella Kate was, but it's a lot taller than five feet, four inches. The average woman's shoe size is an eight and a half, but look, this is the actual size of size 24 shoe. This is how big Ella Kate's shoes are. Ella's bed was nine feet, six inches long. Wow. Most tall tales are made up, but my tall tale is true. I was a giant, a real live giant. And look, even the sign, Ella Ewing, tallest woman on earth. There she is. So who is telling this story? This story is written from whose perspective? Ella Gates, you're right. I wasn't born tall. I was a little baby, just like any other, born in 1872. Mama and Papa named me Ella Kate. When I was still small, Papa went to the bank and borrowed money to buy a farm in a place called Rainbow, Missouri. He built a cabin from trees he cut with his own two hands. We were a little family, just Mama, Papa, and me. But I didn't stay little for long. When I was seven, I started growing at a most startling rate. Mama couldn't sew dresses fast enough to keep up. So she started adding fabric to the bottom of my favorite dresses. Stand straight, Ella Kate, Mama said when she was fixing my hem. But when Mama wasn't looking, I hunched my back so I'd look smaller. At school, I struggled mightily to fit my long legs under my desk. So Papa built a big desk for me. He brought it to school in a wagon pulled by horses. Stand straight, Ella Kate, and show off your new desk, Papa said with pride. I guess he couldn't see how mortified I was. No other girl in my school needed a special desk or wore shoes as big as her paws, men size 12. So when Ella Kate says she was mortified, that just means she was so embarrassed. She was embarrassed that she had to be different than her classmates, that she had to have a different desk and stand out. My best friend was a girl named Pearl. Just like her name, Pearl was small and beautiful. When I got teased at recess on account of my size, Pearl suggested we run away. We'll hide you in a secret place where no one can find you, Pearl said. She was only trying to be nice, but where could I hide? I was too big for everything. I was too big for the world. When I was 13, I stood almost six feet tall. My classmates chose me to recite the Declaration of Independence at a big 4th of July celebration. I was surprised and honored. People from three counties would be there. I practiced for weeks. When it was time, I walked out on stage and began to recite the famous words. But I stopped cold when I heard voices from the crowd. 
Would you look at that girl? cried one man. She's as tall as a barn. Her hands are as big as skillets, laughed a woman. I'll tell you what that girl is, yelled a boy. She's a freak. I ran off stage in tears. Now I want you to think about how Ella Kate might be feeling right now. And you might not be the tallest person in your class and stand out that way, but maybe there's something about you that you are teased for. And you can really connect to how Ella Kate is feeling, can't you? Mama was upset too, but she waited to cry until I'd gone to bed. Don't worry, Papa said. No one's ever treating Ella Kate that way again. We'll keep her safe inside this house for as long as she lives. From my bed, I listened, wishing I could climb inside the big night sky and hide there forever. So really, to Ella Kate, she's feeling hurt when she leaves the house from people's words, yet her dad wants to keep her in so she'll feel safe. But is that a great idea? To stay inside the house and be protected and not experience the real world? I wonder what's gonna happen. But I kept growing. By the age of 16, I was seven feet tall. At 17, I was a foot taller. So a foot taller than seven feet is eight feet tall. One day, a man visited our farm. He managed a museum in Chicago. I hear you have a daughter who stands eight feet tall, the man said. My customers would pay good money to see that, and I'd gladly pay Miss Ella Kate for her time. Papa got mad. Nobody's paying money to gawk at our girl, he fumed. But something in me trusted the man. I believe I'll take that job, I said. And so when I was 18, my parents and I boarded the train to Chicago. For one month, I wore a long dress and a serious expression for seven hours a day while people stared at me. I made $1,000, which was a whole lot of money back in 1890. Back then, you could buy 12 pencils and a bottle of ink for a dime. Tallest lady on earth. So if you had to describe Ella Kate right now in one word, what would, word would you use to describe her? I would say brave. Here she is standing and people are staring at her. The one thing that she hated about being home, but notice people are staring, but she's getting paid for it. And it doesn't seem like they're laughing or making fun of her. They're just staring in almost disbelief. They cannot believe she's this tall. And she's in this far away city from her hometown. I'd say she's pretty brave. The following year, I received a letter from the man in Chicago asking me to return to his museum. This time he wanted me to come for five months. He offered to pay me $5,000. Five months, Papa protested, that's too long. I don't mind, I said. Mama can come with me. Besides, $5,000 is nothing to sneeze at, Papa. It's more than you can make in five years of farming. This was true and Papa knew it. He laughed. I was becoming better at business than he was. I returned to Chicago in 1891 and for the next six years I traveled the country. I appeared in museums, exhibitions, traveling circus shows, and even a world's fair. People paid 10 cents to see me stand in my fancy dresses. You couldn't blame folks for staring. After all, when I finally stopped growing at the age of 22, I stood a towering eight feet four inches tall in my size 24 shoes. My hands were also impressive. Once I removed a ring from my finger and gave it to a baby to wear as a bracelet. It fit perfectly. Other times I held a $1,000 bill in my hand. Anyone who could reach the money unassisted was welcome to take it. No one ever did. 
After I'd made enough money, I went back to Rainbow. The first thing I did was to visit the bank that lent Papa the money to buy our farm. I paid off the debt. I figured it was the least I could do to thank Papa and Mama for all they'd done for me. Then I did something for myself. I bought some land and started building a house. I paid workers with my own money and told them to build my house with tall ceilings and high windows. I ordered custom built furniture. Finally, I had a house in which I could stand up straight without stooping. I had the longest bed in town. I even ordered a custom made buggy and bought a strong horse to pull it. Friends and neighbors like to visit me at my new house. They always ask to hear about my travels. I told them about the big cities and newfangled automobiles I'd seen. I described the mountains and oceans. I even imitated the tigers and elephants that appeared with me at the circus. Most of my friends had never left home or seen such things. But the more I talked about my travels, the more I missed them. So, the year after I finished my house, I returned to work. I enjoyed my days as a circus star show. Sometimes my unusual size came in handy. When I was introduced to Mr. Charles Ringling at a dinner party in 1907, I was able to shake his hand without moving from my place at the end of the table. My friend, little Lord Robert, thought that was a fine and dandy trick. The person whose hand she's shaking, his name is Mr. Charles Ringling. Have you ever heard of the Ringling Brothers Circus? That's who that was. Another time when a bellboy brought ice water to my hotel room, instead of opening the door, I reached through the transom and retrieved the pitcher from his hands. I hope I didn't give him too much of a fright. I always tried to be respectful, and I found that most people were respectful in return. Of course, there was always one person in every crowd who couldn't resist making a cruel joke about my appearance. More than one rude spectator stuck my leg with a pin to see if I stood on stilts. So look, some people think that she's not really this tall. When they come to see her at the show and they pay money to see her, they want to make sure that she's not fake. She's not standing on stilts. So people stick pins in her legs to see. When that happened, I just whispered to myself what Mama and Papa always told me when I was growing up. Stand straight, Ella Kate. The more I said it, the better I felt. And the more I saw of the world, the more I wanted to see it. Because as big as I was, the world was so much bigger. And I intended to see it all. And that is the end of our story. This is a note from Kate Kleiss. Oh, look, here's a real photograph of Ella Kate. And this is Ella Kate with her traveling companion, Maude Wilson. And Maude Wilson is probably average height, and you can see how much taller Ella Kate is than Maude. But it says that Ella Kate had something called a gland, it was a gland disorder, and it was called giantism. It says that she discovered the very thing that made her cry as a child also made it possible for her to lead a remarkable life. So I'm so glad that Kate Kleiss decided to share this story with us. And it's fun to read something that's a true story. And it's fun to think about how that can affect our life and what we can take away from this story and what Ella Kate would want us to take away from the story, I think, is to remember that your words can build someone up and make them feel amazing or they can tear someone down, that we should try to build up the people in our lives who we care for. Boys and girls, I hope you have a great day.